are so many people working tirelessly to educate and motivate us to be more environmentally aware. We introduce you to one of those people, Kathy Nesbitt, a vibrant and unique lady and founder of Kathy's Crawley Composters. My name's Kathy from Kathy's Crawley Composters. I'm a worm farmer and I have the coolest job. To say Kathy Nesbitt is passionate about worms is an understatement. Kathy's a tireless crusader when it comes to spreading the message on how important worms are to composting. Kathy's love affair with worms had its rocky beginnings. Like many relationships, the mutual feelings of affection just weren't there. Actually, I was afraid of worms before starting my business, and it was only when I started to research the worms that I discovered that they eat half their weight and live up to 10 years, have five hearts each, that, that I really became passionate. I actually had a shift in my thinking. I was afraid, and then I started to love them. They probably wish I was a little afraid still. <laughs> Kathy has been educating people about how they can utilize worms in their households. To date, 50,000 people have been educated and entertained by Kathy's unique style of teaching. All their organs are here, all their hearts. So if a worm gets cut in half here, can this piece live? Um, the, the workshops that I do with the children are so fun. The children get the concept. They're not afraid to hold the worms, and that is always the, that's the sort of the, the climax, I guess, of my workshops. The, the, uh, the grand finale is holding the worms, and it's, the, the energy in the room goes up tenfold. Some of the children from um, urban centers have never even seen a worm, let alone hold, held a worm. So it's sometimes, for some children, it's their first opportunity to be that close with nature. Kathy has turned her passion for worms into a business. Today we're here at her worm farm to learn more about these titans of composting. Okay, feeding time at the zoo. Perfect environment for worms. There's three key elements. Temperature, so between 16 and 28 Celsius. Moisture, you want about 75% moisture. Better too wet than too dry, but they can't swim, so you don't want pools of water. And airflow, so you need to have whatever container you have, you need to have some holes in your bin so that you can have some airflow. Composting is always aerobic process. Worms require a carbon-nitrogen mix. The red wiggler worms, that is, require a carbon-nitrogen mix. So the carbon is shredded paper, could be leaf, straw, cardboard, and the nitrogen is the food scraps. But that could also be manure and straw or wood chips and manure. So there's all kinds of combinations to create the perfect environment for worms. Worms are hermaphrodites, meaning male and female, but they, it t still takes another worm to reproduce. So they wrap together do their thing, and then they wait for a day or two so that they don't impregnate themselves, that swollen band secretes a substance which forms the cocoon, and the worm backs out of it, sort of like taking your shirt off. Then the egg is on the worm's head, and then it deposits in the soil, like magic. Oh, wow, that's amazing. So they're actually mating right now. So they're mating as we speak right in the palm of my hand. E each of them will produce a, a worm egg or a cocoon, and then... Each of them? Yes, they both become so they pregnant. Both become, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, they're hermaphrodites, so they both become pregnant, and they'll both produce a co cocoon. Three weeks for the cocoon to hatch, and then up to 20 babies in each egg, so both of them in both eggs, uh, five or six is the average, and then three weeks to hatch, 10 weeks to sexual maturity, and then their babies will be making babies. Did you know that the worms have had a long history with us humans? For thousands of years, we have known the importance worms serve in creating rich soil. So important that Cleopatra deemed it punishable by death, the harm or removal of the earthworm. When I do my school workshops, I say to the kids, you know, we go to school so we can learn stuff. But as a society, I believe that we've forgotten the value of the worms. Um, Aristotle called worms the intestines of the earth because of the fabulous work they do, the, the plows of the, of the soil. Darwin studied worms for the last 40 years of his life and said they may in fact be one of the most important creatures. <laughs> I was at the Royal Winter Fair and heard the Canadian astronaut Dr. Robert Thirst speak and he spoke about the Mars exploration and it's a six-year return trip. So they've got water and air worked out. It's food. How are they going to bring enough food for six years? They're doing research right now with the University of Guelph on how to grow food in space. So they will be bringing red wiggler worms to the red planet Mars once they get there. Oh, look at that. Here we go. So you can see the, the worms are amongst the scraps here. Oh, they're eating right now. Yeah. This guy's made it, so his cotillum is swollen. So, this so that's how you can tell it's... Yeah, this guy's going to produce an egg, this guy-gal, this he-she. 
<laughs> we'll produce a cocoon and then it'll cocoon and slide off the head. The worms are very low maintenance. They, they're, they're the best pet that you could ever have because of all those hearts, I guess, is the main thing. But they eat all of our scraps and they're quiet. You can go on vacation and not worry about anything about the worms. They're going to look after your stuff. Come back, you'll have this black gold waiting for you. You know, when it rains, mm -hmm. you can associate rain with the worms. Mm -hmm. You can always smell it in the air. Why is that? Is it because they just love the, the dampness, the wetness of it, so they come out to... That's a great question. Worms to say hi to the rain or <laughs> to play in the rain? Worms are 90% water, so they do require a fairly moist environment. And when it rains, the nightcrawlers dig permanent uh, burrows or tunnels. So, they, so when it rains, their homes get filled up with water. Uh, they can be immersed in water for actually for a couple of days. Yeah, and still survive, even though they breathe through their skin. I don't know how. They are incredible. Their eggs will last up to 40 years until hatching, until conditions are right. That's wild. That's how they survived. It, really, they've been around since the dinosaur, um, waiting to serve their purpose, which is to help us with our garbage crisis. Their time has come. If we took all of nature's decomposers, except the earthworm, to make an inch of topsoil, it would take 100 years. If we bring back the earthworm, we can make an inch of topsoil in one year. You know it's a myth that if you cut a worm in half, they'll survive? Because they have a head and a tail, you're basically decapitating the little guy when you do so. So next time you see a worm, make sure you keep him whole. Well, worms are soil makers, so they're essential. If we didn't have worms, we wouldn't be able to grow any food. We would not be in existence if it wasn't for the worms, the lowly worm. Um, what goes in comes out, and what comes out of the worm is nature's finest soil, really. To find out more about vermicomposting and Kathy's Crawley Composters, be sure to visit our website at rogerstv.com.